What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Maggie and today I'm going to be tier ranking all of the X-Men movies now that I have finally watched all of them. Before we get into it, make sure you like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. So this video has been a long time coming considering I have never seen any of the X-Men movies until now. Growing up, I never really watched any of the X-Men movies. They were around, but I never really found myself stumbling upon them like I did with Spider-Man and Fantastic Four, oddly enough. Those were the two movies that I carried around the most that are like the only two DVDs that I really wanted to watch. And also, I didn't really know anybody that was into the X-Men movies. I hadn't really heard of anyone mention any other character other than Wolverine, and I kind of knew of him, but didn't really inquire more. So leading up to the announcement of Deadpool and Wolverine, I decided that I was going to watch all 14 of the X-Men movies so that I knew what was gonna be happening in Deadpool and Wolverine. Now that Deadpool is technically a Disney-owned license, I wanted to know what all the stories were about and how they intertwined, especially because these characters are now spilling over into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I took it upon myself to do some research and I sat down and watched all 14, and now that I have, I am planning on doing a tier ranking of them. I have some thoughts about all of them. I'm sure you'd want to know, as a first time watcher, what I thought of every single movie leading up to Deadpool and Wolverine. So without further ado, Let's get into it. So on this tier ranking list, there are six categories, S, A, B, C, D, and F. All right, starting off with X-Men. I watched these in the release order date, as I mentioned on my community tab, that was um, probably the best watch option for me as a first time watcher. It was recommended the most for the poll that I created. So again, thank you all for answering that. And I know this is a long time coming, but anyway, X-Men, this is the original that came out in 2000. I have this as pretty good. So I would say that this is a, like in the A category. Yeah, I ranked this a four out of five on my letterbox because it introduces everything pretty well. And it was very intriguing um, getting to see where all these characters come into play, especially Rogue and um, Logan. Those were the two that I cared about the most in that movie. And they did a pretty good job at introducing everyone and um, basically driving my interest. Then I watched X2 immediately after, and to be honest, I didn't like this one as much. So I'll put this as B, because I have it as like a three and a half out of five. As I mentioned, I kind of zoned out a little bit. This one like actually gets the story moving along, like the opening sequence was really fun, and we got the introduction to Nightcrawler, but I thought the, um, the overall striker plotline was interesting enough but it wasn't really fleshed out as much as I wanted it to be. But I did like seeing Mystique and Magneto in this one. It was a nice change of pace from the first movie as it, again, like I said, moved it along, but you know, that might change. But I, I thought it was all right. Then we have uh, X-Men The Last Stand or X3, however you want to call it. I have this as like, I think two and a half out of five. So I'm going to put this as like C. This is more of a meh category for me. X-Men The Last Stand wasn't that great. It's definitely the weakest out of the three. I did think it was still entertaining enough. It was an interesting concept like from the beginning and I liked where it was heading. It just didn't really knock it out of the park in the end. I thought it kind of undid, the ending of X3 kind of undid what happened throughout the first two X-Men movies with Jean's character. And it was just, just unnecessary in my opinion. I liked that we got to see the Phoenix side, but at the same time, it kind of seemed like a random addition. And I know that that's kind of what goes on with the character in the comic books, but it just didn't seem right. And as a first time movie watcher, it was confusing. But next we have X-Men Origins Wolverine. This one I have as horrible. I'll put this in the D category because I have this ranked as a two out of five. I wanted to like this more than I did. I mean, it's definitely not the worst superhero movie. It intrigued me the most because as you can see, Wolverine ended up <laughs> throughout the 14 movies, Wolverine, Logan ended up being my favorite character throughout because he was just the most entertaining. I really enjoyed the opening. It, it was just fantastic. Getting to see Sabretooth and uh, Logan at the beginning of the movie was very, very entertaining and like set my expectations to be pretty high because I was on the edge of my seat at the beginning. I wanted to immediately know more, but nothing came about it. I think it just kind of missed the mark. It started going downhill like when Logan was, he found Wraith and Dukes and then was heading to Vegas for Gambit. Like the introduction of those characters was all right, 
some of them I just was really upset about. And there was very cheesy dialogue. I couldn't get over it. But this one also had the introduction of Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. And I didn't like this version of him because there was not enough screen time. The mutant killer Deadpool sequence fight at the end was also probably the most entertaining part of this movie other than the beginning, um, which I know some people don't enjoy it, but whatever. I, as a first time watcher, I thought it was kind of fun, but heavily underutilized character in the movie. Again, I wasn't blown away by any means and I wanted to like this more than I did. All right, moving on, this is X-Men First Class. Okay, this I have as like, awesome four and a half out of five this movie blew my expectations through the roof this introduced a whole new again class it was supposed to be the first class of x-men and it really hit the nail on the head for me this was spectacular and probably one of the best comic book movies i've seen in a long long time and i loved every second and every character from start to finish, I was sat, seated. And I know that if I had stumbled upon this and watched it as a kid, I would have fallen in love with it, just like I did with the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man. And I'm so, so upset that I didn't get to see this anytime sooner, but I'm glad I finally did because this is one that I will rewatch time and time again. I think that this class was perfect and I truly cared about each and every character. I do have a newfound respect for the Raven Mystique character because of this, or the first get-go of the X-Men characters, like X, um, X-Men, X2, X-Men Last Stand, Mystique, I don't really care about. But these movies, again, like I said, gave me a newfound respect. Even though I was doing this X-Men marathon, like watching them for the first time, it was pretty amazing how quickly I was able to just catch on to the nods and references to um, the earlier movies. And this was probably the most entertaining experience I had watching all of the movies. Next we have uh, The Wolverine. I have this as C, like a meh movie. I have it as a two out of five. Two or three? Oh, I have it, at, oh, three out of five. This I thought was like a fun little side quest for Logan. Um, it didn't really pertain to the rest of the storyline as in like the rest of the X-Men movies. And so I thought it was kind of like a new, a fun new medium to see him in. But I think this, this is a tentative three. Thinking about it now, it's actually quite boring. It feels a little unnecessary to the rest of the X-Men movies. I would, I mean, I love getting more Logan storylines, Wolverine stories, but it was uh, overall pretty straightforward with the plot, exciting action, but just, forgettable in the end. I would never pass up an opportunity to watch another Hugh Jackman installment as Wolverine, but I don't think I'll be going back to this one anytime soon. It was just kind of like a fun, like I said, side quest. Then we have X-Men Days of Future Past. This was also awesome. I don't quite have it in the superior category. I might change that going forward because I loved this one just as much as I loved X-Men First Class. I have a soft spot for the like origin movies and so First Class, like I said, really hit the mark. But this one not only was an excellent sequel, it again exceeded my expectations by introducing not only the original cast to their, to their past selves, but the overlaps were incredible. It's probably one of the best X-Men movies out there and I could keep watching and re-watching this movie without getting bored because it's such a crazy plot line with like an intense side quest of social commentary, but I mean, I won't really get into that, but it was so well done and executed so well that even though there wasn't as much action as I thought there would be, being able to combine combine the casts and time travel, um, it's, it's the new direction that movies are headed in, but I think like this did it so well that it'll be hard to top anything like this going forward, especially with movies in the MCU as they're doing the time travel thing, but this is definitely a new favorite. All right, now we have Deadpool. Don't hate me for my rating. I have this as a three and a half out of five, so this is in my good category, like not great, but good, so I didn't like this as much as I thought I was going to. Everyone seems to love Deadpool, and that's fine. I just definitely didn't like it as much as everyone else does. 
but that doesn't mean it wasn't good. It was very, very solid. And I, I really liked the introduction to this character and the breaking of the fourth wall aspect was very, very cool and also unexpected, but it really got annoying and kind of dry after a little bit because it's just every other thing he says, he turns to the camera and it's just kind of takes you out of it. Well, that was especially for me. Other people may enjoy that, but it eventually got a little bit annoying. There are a lot of bits of the movie where like Ryan Reynolds, he shines. Like you really, you really see the talent come through and you do laugh out loud, but I just don't think it's my favorite movie. This kind of, I mean, there was a lot of dry humor that eventually, like I said, got annoying and old after a while. But again, I love the origin movies. I think there's just something about being able to fall in love with the introduction of a character that like I have a soft spot for, but the rewatchability for the, the rewatchability factor for this movie is also exceedingly high. I just have to give a lot of credit to the writers and Ryan Reynolds, especially because this is a, this isn't, this isn't your average superhero or anti-hero movie. It was good enough. <laughs> and then we have X-Men Apocalypse. So this one I also have in the meh category. So it's like a C. Also tentative. The Wolverine I have ranked pretty high. So eventually these two could drop in their ratings. But again, this is a first time watch. So this is where I had them. I was entertained enough. X-Men Apocalypse was kind of one that I forgot about. I originally ranked it as three and a half out of five, but thinking about it now, I don't really remember what happened. And because of that, it just, it, I dropped it to a two and a half out of five. Um, because it was, it's an interesting follow-up to Days of Future Past. And the biggest factor was I was confused the entire movie. It's kind of like they forgot what their direction was or what the timeline was in this movie because of Days of Future Past. All the events seemed to get a little bit messy and I needed to look up the timeline of when things were happening. But again, it's my it was my first watch through, so it should be a little bit understandable. I did like that we got more Scott and Jean in this movie than, cause we haven't really, we've only seen them like briefly and they're, this, this really deepened their connection and gave me a newfound respect for both of them. Um, cause I was on the fence about liking them in the original X-Men movies, but Again, I like the idea of the apocalypse villain. It just kind of fell short for me at the end because again, the com like I was so confused that I just, I had a big headache the whole movie. You know what? I'll probably drop that eventually. Then we have Logan. All right, here we go. This, <sighs> some people like it, some people don't. Logan. Logan was a five out of five for me and that may be very controversial, but I thought this was a perfect movie. I thought it was a perfect send off for this character because of how connected I was at the beginning. Watching these movies for the first time, it was the first character that I instantly connected to and like cared for. And so getting this movie was almost like a love letter <laughs> to any kind of fan, new or old. The thing is, I did know how it was going to end, but I kind of got lost in the adventure eventually. Like I got lost in the adventure and just pushed the end thought out of my mind. And I was really able to just sit down and enjoy it. Again, the only problem I really ran into with this movie was how the timeline contradicts itself. But like looking past that, I, I then was able to just figure it out and enjoy it. But you know, this I think, cause I know, cause Logan again returns in um, Deadpool and Wolverine. So I'm thinking that maybe this takes place on its own timeline. I don't, I, I guess that's how you, interpret it. This Logan is the same Logan as, or is the same Logan that's in the Deadpool universe, according to Deadpool and Wolverine. So there's that confusion. I don't know. But this movie I really liked because of the older aspect of Logan, because he almost doesn't age in any of the other movies. And so this is a new perspective. I didn't even know Charles was in this movie. I knew about Laura or um, X-23, but I didn't really know how she came to both of them. I had no idea Charles' plotline revolved around him accidentally eliminating the rest of the X-Men, which is kind of a big shock, but it takes a huge leap forward from the other X-Men movies because this is the first rated R X-Men movie aside from Deadpool. It just blew all of the other movies out of the water. I loved First Class and Days of Future Past, but this one I really connected to and 
I can see myself continuing to watch over and over again because of just befitting this movie is to this character, which I've come to really love. And I think it wrapped up really nicely and satisfied, it satisfied everyone enough. And I just have a huge respect for everyone that put this together, especially Hugh Jackman. And I just couldn't be happier about it. This, I think, was the film that, I mean, this might be an unpopular opinion, but this is the movie that everyone was waiting for. Like, we, we needed a Logan story like this because the other X-Men movie, or the other Wolverine origin movies were kind of bad. Next, we have Deadpool 2. This might be also an unpopular opinion. I enjoyed X I enjoyed Deadpool 2 more than I liked the original Deadpool. I think because I got used to the humor, but also the time travel aspect intrigues me a lot more, which is strange, but I did think Wade was overall funnier in this movie and just generally more likable, which is very strange, but I think that's what made this viewing experience more entertaining than the first X-Men movie, or the first Deadpool movie. Um, it's also weird how, well, I'm not sure if they were doing this on purpose, probably, because it's Marvel, but it's weird how well this fits in with the stuff and direction that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going, and I think because of that, I was drawn to it more. But I think if I were to rewatch the Deadpool movies, it would pr I'd probably watch this one and, and skip the original. That's that's an unpopular opinion. Please don't hate me for that. Next, I have Dark Phoenix. Um, I remember when they were doing all the press for this movie and everyone seemed really excited for it. But I, I, again, I never saw it because I never saw the X-Men movies. But when I finally watched it, I hated it. <laughs> I gave it a 1 out of 5, and basically just was appalled by the direction they took Jean's character. So, Jean, from the X-Men to X3 movies, like, did they forget about her character? Did they just make a brand new story? We saw, like, Phoenix at the end of X-Men Last Stand, and I didn't like that direction either. I didn't like how that was executed, but this movie just... I think tarnished the character completely and kind of disregarded the other, th the original three movies and her character development there. I didn't like any of this. I thought that, I mean, her, her writing was flat a little bit, was a little flat in um, X-Men Apocalypse, but now we got Jean on a uh, killing spree. It's just so confusing and I was bored throughout most of it because of how confused I was. And I'm sad that it wasn't good because I really thought that like with all the press that I saw that this was a good movie and people enjoyed it because I, I really had high hopes for Sophie Turner. I, I do enjoy her movies, but this one fell completely flat. It really missed everything. And I think I might even dock it to half a, half a star if I were to rewatch, but I don't think I ever will. All right, moving on. We have The New Mutants and spoiler alert, I actually didn't watch this one. I know, this is misleading, but I didn't watch this one because I watched the trailer. I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover. I had absolutely no interest in watching this after Dark Phoenix, so we'll come back to it, I guess. No, I, I have no interest in sitting down and watching this movie because I finished this watch through by the time Deadpool and Wolverine came out. And let's just say, Yeah, I'm gonna say that. I think that this movie was perfect. In fact, I wanted more. The opening credit scene actually blew my mind and I think about it every day. This entire ranking is coming out in September and I watched this back in August, late July. I think um, I posted my rankings a little bit late, but I have thought about the opening credit scene of this movie every day leading up to now every day. <laughs> and I wasn't really sure how this movie was going to compare to the other Deadpool movies because of that shift over to Disney. And I'm so, so happy that nothing was like Disneyfied because it's just as gory and like there's still as much profanity as ever. And I think it just hit the mark. Everyone showed up 
for Hugh Jackman, I believe that, and I guess Ryan Reynolds. But the return of Hugh Jackman as the Wolverine, and I can't, I, I can't be one of those people that's like, I've been waiting for this forever, considering I just watched these movies. I was able to gather that this was a love letter testament to all the fans who had been there um, through all of it. And even if you're a newer fan like me, this delivered on every single level. And it, it really shows that the filmmakers care about the people that love these movies and who wanted, who wanted to see this ultimate team up. Again, whether you're a new fan or old, this is something that we all wanted and it delivered completely. It was the crossover event that everyone has been waiting for, but it also opens up the door for so many potential MCU projects going forward. So Hugh Jackman's gonna be doing this till he's 90. I think every joke and every cameo hit perfect and it was exactly what everyone wanted. I watched this entire movie with a smile on my face and I just can't wait to just keep re-watching this movie when it comes out on streaming. I, I loved every aspect of it. Even at the end of the movie, they had a mid credit scene where they had a testament to the, the um, Fox franchise with the tune of Green Day's Good Riddance, which has a soft spot in my heart. So I literally was like teary eyed watching that. I have only seen these movies once. Even that montage at the end made me emotional because it just shows how far the entire franchise has come. And all of it is possible because of the fans. I think that the mid, the mid credit scene was probably the most respectful way Disney could have thanked um, Fox for their contributions to the superhero genre. This movie was, like I said, made for the fans and and I don't think it could have been done better. After watching all of them, I think it's safe to say that I will be re-watching the X-Men movies as I, this, I keep using this phrase, but I have a newfound respect for these movies. There is a reason why I am drawn to Marvel and the MCU in general, and it is being able to connect with a whole plethora of characters and just the entertainment value of all of it. I think that 20th Century Fox production movies such as Fantastic Four and the X-Men franchise, they walked so that Disney's Marvel Cinematic Universe, the MCU, could really run so that they could shine and create projects such as Avengers Endgame, Avengers Infinity War, Spider-Man No Way Home, you name it. Movies like that owe a lot to the X-Men. And I couldn't be more grateful to have finally stumbled upon this universe and this franchise because I really didn't know what I was missing. And it turned out to be a huge, huge gap. So that's my ranking of all of the X-Men movies. Please let me know down below in the comments what you thought. And also let me know what your ranking is. What are your favorite X-Men movies? Should I give some of them another chance? Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And also thank you all so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.